Welcome back to Room 237, back with another review. And this is a film from Hulu, but this is not a blind first time watch. This is something that I have seen before. Um, I did not see this when it first came out in 2020. I saw this shortly before the move, so a few months ago. I, I meant to review it back then, but for some reason I never got around to it. Uh, I will be going back and rewatching some that I saw on Hulu at that time that I never got around to. But this is definitely one of the best and most effective ones on Hulu right now, or that I've seen on Hulu. And actually, when it came out in 2020, it was the most watched and most talked about on Twitter film on Hulu. And that is Run. And yes, this is one of the most effective, especially if you're going in for a, a suspense and thrills. It is more of a psychological thriller. Uh, but if you're a fan of movies like Misery, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, sort of those uh, uh, held prisoner by someone crazy uh, type stories. But in this case mother daughter and the mother has Munchausen syndrome by proxy which if you're familiar with the real life story of uh, Gypsy and um, uh, Dee Dee Baker I believe their last name is Baker the real life story for the Hulu show The Act this isn't based on that I'm probably not even really inspired by it because there's numerous cases of it but it's a very fascinating uh, uh, disorder where, you know, a Munchausen syndrome is when you come up with all these ailments or give yourself ailments for a variety of reasons, for benefits, for sympathy, for attention, or whatever. By proxy is when you do it to someone else, like a parent to a child for benefits sympathy or for the complete love and reliance of that person to the parent in which case it's more so this and it's not really a spoiler I guess because well I, I guess it kind of is but you can pretty much tell going into it that you know, she's going to start slowly figuring out things about her mother and being held prisoner. I mean, even the tagline, you can't escape a, 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 a mother's love. I won't go into details specifically about it till after spoilers, but this is a very good film. Uh, definitely one of the more effectively uh, uh, suspenseful films that I've seen in quite a while. Now, it was directed by, uh, what was his name? Anish Shaganti, who directed the John Cho film Searching, which I heard was very good. is one that I would like to see. Written by him and Sev Ohanian. And it stars Sarah Paulson as the mother, Diane. Who, yes, she played Nurse Ratchet uh, in, the, in the show Ratchet, which I haven't seen and I really don't care to. Uh, Nurse Ratchet is one of my favorite female villains of all time. Lu Louise Fletcher as Nurse Ratchet in the film Blood Flow with Cuckoo's Nest, one of my favorite actress performances. Cuckoo's Nest, one of my favorite films of all time. And I really just don't care to see all this made up backstory. Probably the same reason why I didn't watch Bates Motel. I, I just think it's unneeded. As good as her performance might be. And Kira Allen plays her daughter, Chloe. And I was very surprised to see that this was Kira Allen's first role. Because she does a very good job. It, so good that I was actually surprised, even more surprised, when I found out she's actually uses a wheelchair in uh, real life or I, I wasn't surprised I mean because she does it so well just small details that like how she gets out of bed she sort of 
picks her legs up at the knee, then flattens them out. And small details you don't really see in other movies when it's an actor doing it. So I wasn't surprised to find out that she does use a wheelchair in real life. Because she's very effective with it. Which also, she's the first wheelchair actress since Susan Paulson in uh, Peters. Susan Peters in 1948 with uh, uh, The Signs of the Ram. That was the last time a wheelchair-bound actress performed in a uh, suspense film. And, yeah, that's basically our cast. <laughs> we really don't have a supporting cast, really. We do have an appearance by Pat Healy, who I just talked about in Carnage Park. He was in The Innkeepers. He was in What Shall We Do Now? Or, uh, excuse me. It's a Pink Floyd song. Uh, we Need to Do Something, which is one I have seen and I will get to at some point. And it was cool to see him play a good guy for once in this. But that's really it. So, it, I believe it was put out by Lionsgate. Uh, released November 2020 by Hulu. And theatrically through Lionsgate in uh, other territories. But, oh, in the score, the score was done by... Uh, Torin, Torin uh, Borrowdale. And I thought this when I watched it and then I read. His goal was to sort of do like a Bernard Herman type score. Which he did He did scores for Hitchcock, uh, early Brian De Palma. He's pretty much the essential uh, suspense uh, composer. And he was trying to do like a modern take on a Herman score. Like something Herman would do. So it sounds modern. Like something you would see in a recent film. But it's definitely evocative of a Bernard Herman score. And very effective. And the cinematography was done by uh, Hilary Fife Sparrow. And it is a very good looking film too. Especially for being made for $3.4 million. So the film, I mean, it's not very long. It's only 89 minutes. So it can't really take... Uh, it can't really go about its pacing uh, methodically and slowly reveal how twisted Sarah Paulson in, is as a mother and what this daughter's going through. It does feel a bit rushed towards the beginning, we don't really get much of a glimpse into their life before she gets any hints and everything's normal. In fact, I I really like how it opens because we don't really get any credits. It opens up with just all this tiny text of all these ailments like arrhythmia, diabetes, asthma, paralysis, and then one really long one. But the last word in the last uh, definition is the word run. So the title's like this small down at the bottom of the screen. I thought that was cool. And yeah, it, it so the pacing might not work for some people. Like it is kind of rushed or even convenient. It is kind of convenient at times. But one thing they do take their time with each time is the big uh, uh, suspense pieces, the uh, segments. Those are paced very well, shot very well. The score is done perfectly for those scenes. And even though it does feel kind of rushed or sped up, it is kind of a methodical buildup. Like she notices uh, pills a bottle of pills that look like hers but it has her mother's name on it she questions her about it but she kind of blows it off she's very uh restricted in things she gets to do in life she's homeschooled uh the internet is turned off after lights out that's not what they call it but essentially that's what it is she doesn't let her check the mail uh 
I think all the phones except for one are uh, disconnected. She won't let her check the mail because at this point she's 17. She's a senior in high school, homeschool. And she has this huge dream to be accepted into the University of Washington. It takes place in or around Seattle. She seems to be a very gifted uh, engineer of some sort. You know, she has like a work table, a soldering iron. She could build all these contraptions. And so that's what she wants to go to school for. And you, you can kind of tell where it's going. How, like, you know, she doesn't let her... You know, she doesn't allow her to check the mail. Doesn't want her to see stuff from college. Uh, tries to keep her away from the internet as much as possible. I guess so she can't look up some uh, sensitive things. And every time she does find something out like these pills, she's always on the phone with someone else to try to make it sound like she's covering something up or try to cover her tracks. And it does become a movie kind of like Misery or Whatever Happened to Baby Jane where she really is a prisoner trying to get out, trying to find help. And the the crazy of Sarah Paulson is coming out more and more. And the performances of both really do help this film. Kira Allen, you really do feel for her. She's very sympathetic. You really... you. Know, you care about her. You want her to figure this out. And you want her to get away. Sarah Paulson is so good at just being this. Like an anti-vax mom. But cranked up to 11. <laughs> Sorry for getting political. But it, it makes me laugh. And when she has to come up with all these lies. And ways to get out of these scenarios with people. Just how well she's able to pull it off. You know, she's very good at her role as well. And yeah, it, it does speed up. And there are, you know, like... A good portion of the film relies on figuring out what exactly these green pills are that she found. I mean, the internet's down. She can't look it up. She dials just a random person <laughs> in the phone in her mother's room. Gets a stranger. He looks it up for her, but he says the name doesn't match the picture. It's a red pill, not a green one. Talks her into uh, taking her to a movie, which is by the pharmacy. So she says she has to go to the bathroom. Wheels to the pharmacy. And there's this interesting exchange where she's just like, just tell me what it's for. And that's where... It really hits her that her mother is not exactly who she says she is. And her life isn't... Her her life has been a lie, essentially. That's where I'll stop. I probably should have stopped sooner uh, as far as spoilers go. But... And I haven't even gotten into some of the uh, 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 suspense scenes. But without giving away, like when she has to crawl out a window to get out of her room. Or... You know, like the, the scenes towards the end at the hospital is so well orchestrated and paced and with the music. And it's just the performances, the score, and the pacing of specifically the uh, uh, suspense scenes are what makes this movie so effective. And I do like the story. I am fascinated by stories about Munchausen by proxy. And... The only thing I can say I, I have an issue with that does conflict with how well the rest is so executed would be some of the convenience or sort of the rushed pace of the uh, unfolding uh, of this information. Also, the very ending. The final scene ending, I kind of have an issue with I wish it didn't end that way I'm sure a lot of people like it I'm sure a lot of people will think that that's a, a deserved for me it could have been more satisfying if it went a different way it still works but it's not as good as what I was hoping for and I'll explain that in uh, spoilers but it's on Hulu 
It's one of the most effecti effectively suspenseful films on Hulu. So definitely go check it out. So when she's at the hosp uh, the pharmacy, it, and this is one of those convenient scenes, kind of like with the stranger helping her out with the information. You know, she tells her it's a scavenger hunt. Just, you know, we like scavenger hunts. I need to figure out what this pill is. Oh, it's it's your mother's pill. I can't tell you. Please. And she's trying to hurry because she knows her mother's probably going to come fly through the door. And she does. But right before she says, oh, wait, there's kind of a loophole. Because this isn't your mother's pill. It's actually for your dog. They don't have a dog. I, I guess it's for joint pains or something and she says what happens if a human takes it and she says well it could probably just make your legs go numb so now we know that every maybe not everything you know because we do see her have asthma attacks we do see her have to monitor her blood sugar we do see her vomit a few times but we do know that at least her legs and her paralysis has been orchestrated for years because of these pills uh the mother diane shows up injects her with something gets her home she's not home but she left her food and not only is the door locked but there's like a broom holding it and this is how smart she is and i like that she's not just this damsel in distress that's going to try to break the door down she takes her soldering iron a blanket and she keeps a mouthful of water crawls out her window across the roof and then we get to her mother's window she takes a soldering iron oh it also has all these cords tied together hits the window lets the heat crack in a bit so she spits the water and it cools off it just busts lays the blanket over climbs in but then she sees that the chairlift for the stairs has been undone she can't use it so she just throws her chair and she falls off but she gets down the stairs and i like her reaction when she looks down at herself after she fell down the stairs and she sees her toes start to wiggle just that realization that oh my god i've been able to do this the whole time and has acted very well uh she gets outside Stopped by a mailman played by Pat Healy. He agrees to help her, but then Sarah Paulson shows up. And this is just how evil, conniving, uh, uh, deceitful, and probably why a lot of people might not help someone in these situations. Because what, uh, you know, she tries to say, her doctor's changed her meds. She's acting crazy. He's like, I'm sorry, I, I got to listen to her. You know, it, it will make me feel better. And, and you can see the gears turning and just her, not just her ego being hurt, but also just her tactics not working. And she's like, oh, okay. My young 17-year-old daughter who's hurt and bleeding was found by a grown man. She dials 911, is like, let's see what they think. Does that Karen, like, mm, mm, mm. you know, pretty much making her look like a predator. Thankfully, he doesn't bite. So, yeah, that's probably why a lot of people might not help someone. Because they'll be like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just tell them that you touched her. But, so he's like, well, uh, I'm taking her anyway. She kills him. She injects an overdose of something. Also injects her and she wakes up in the basement now some people will say this is ultra convenient for exposition i will say there's kind of a loophole but i see what they're coming where they're coming from she is still chained to a wall so she doesn't have full range of the room but she does find this box with her mother's name on it maiden name i guess it's a different name in this box she she finds uh a death certificate that says Chloe, two hours and 11 minutes. Because the opening scene is actually Sarah Paulson looking into this incubator with a small, premature, very sick-looking fake baby. 
and it's left ambiguous if the baby lived and just has all these ailments or if it died. And here we find out the baby actually died. And then there's a newspaper clipping saying newborn baby snatched from hospital. So hers died. She took this one. And we even do get a flashback of her well shot. I like how it's shot like the maternity ward. It's like this upward shot. Almost as if the baby's looking at her through the window. It just like. Just showing almost like the genesis of her crazy. But also there's a picture of her. With the sticky note that says Chloe birthday. When she removes the sticky note. It shows her legs like she's uh, running. Also earlier in the film. After the pills were found out. Uh, we see Diane on the internet looking up household neurotoxins. Whether to be find a way to poison her from home so she doesn't need the prescription. To explain why her pills aren't working you know, to other people or why she's been acting so cr crazy. But it's some concoction with tar, paint thinner. And she wants to inject her with it. That, that will fuck her up. But she's able to crawl into this closet, lock it, and she drinks this chemical that will poison and kill you probably, just so that she has no choice but to take her to the hospital. But before then, you get probably one of the best scenes in the movie where you know, you really see Sarah Paulson's uh, performance. You know, she's asking her, like, it. it was I ever really sick? Who are these people? Why'd you take me from them? Like when she asks, uh, when she says you took me from, the, from them, she just snaps and screeches like, I saved you from them. And say like, have I ever been sick? It's like she just grabs her by the face and she's not trying to play sweet mom anymore. You can see the manic coming out. She's like, name one time. Name one time I wasn't there for you. It is just, it's a wonderful scene. It definitely would, you can just see the seams of her, her, her act, Diane's act, just cr cracking. So she's able to drink that in the hospital. She lives, but now she's completely, you know, can't move or speak. And there's this very suspenseful scene where, the doctors tell her, you know, well, this was a suicide attempt. We have to have her evaluated. And so she's in the bed with a tube trying to get the nurse's attention. She wants to write. She's trying to write mom. But we just get that look of her at the window. Just kind of they look over at the nurse. And then just kind of slip away. And then we see a light come on. And we hear code, code blue patient in whatever room in now a critical condition meaning she fucked with someone but uh, the way the music rises and the way we hear the heart monitor and it shows her heart rate on the screen growing like 60 something 70 something 90 something over 100 over 110 just building up as her heart rate goes up and very effective, very uh, a suspenseful because now she can't speak, she can't move. But then we just see it flatline. And, you know, Diane takes her. She's in a wheelchair. She's trying to mouth for people to help. Uh, uh, gets her to the stairs. Well, first they're in the elevator. It really... One thing I did forget to say. Before... She crawls into the closet and drinks that stuff. We see her really crack when Chloe tells her, like, you didn't do this for me. You did this for you. Which is true. Like, it's all for her. And just the way she breaks down after that, in anger and being figured out and just everything, very well done. So she ha she's immobilized, but we see she still has her tied up with tubes. They're in the elevator. She says, like, 
I've been thinking about what you said, and I'm going to spend the rest of our lives making sure you never feel that way again. Pretty much meaning I'm going to take us home and kill ourselves, basically. But the nurse knows she's missing, finds mom written down, calls security. A bit of a showdown at the stairs. And I do like how every time she's able to stand up to her mother or fight back, there's something of uh, the Washington uh, University. Like she finds her acceptance letter. That's what makes her say, like, it wasn't for me, it was for you. Or when sec security's coming and the escalator's broken, she can't move the chair. So when she moves the blanket, she sees she's stopping it with her feet. She sees like a banner for Washington University. I like how they use that. Like she's kind of using that as uh, it's been her life goal, but she you know, she took it from me. Security shows up. She draws her pistol. They shoot her. She falls down the stairs. Then we cut to seven years later. And... Uh, she goes to the correctional facility to visit her. And, and this is the ending I have a problem with. I'm glad she didn't die. I wanted her to go to prison. But th this is... Plot-wise, this is the only issue that I have with it. Uh, she goes to visit her. She can walk a little with a cane. But... Uh, you know, she tells her, I think she's married, she has a kid. She talks about how her kid has learned how to walk. Spent the last holiday with both sets of grandparents. I guess implied she reunited with her birth parents. And she even says, like, uh, I think she likes mine better. And when we see Sarah Paulson, I mean, she is all gray. She's gone. Her eyes are wild. I mean, more than seven years. She looks like she's gained more than seven years. I'm guessing just for the stress, the loss, the grief. Uh, which, to her, would feel like immense defeat. But then she tells her, like, well, this is my last visit. It's, it's all over. You know, I have to move on. And we've seen her vomit a few times, but... And she just pulls out this little wrap with three of those green pills. And she says, now open up. And then it just cuts to black. Meaning, because it's like a correctional facility, but she's in a hospital bed. She's bedridden. Meaning that she's now doing that to her. Which is fine. And I can see why people would think that's deserved and justified. To me, the problem I have with it, what would have made it more, like, fuck yeah, more satisfying, would have been if it was just a regular prison where they are between glass on the phones, she can use her body, she is all there. But the way she's telling her, like, I'm living my own life without you. I'm accomplishing all this without you. Uh... I'm with my real mother. I'm, I'm having my own kids, and I'm letting them do all this stuff. You know, I, I've accomplished so much more since I've been away from you. You know, break down everything about her. That to me would, and she can't do anything. She's behind glass. That to me would have been way more satisfying, but s still fairly good enough. I mean, it, it still works. She still got something, but uh, I really would have preferred that kind of ending. But yeah, the scenes where you know, it, it the a uh, a suspense scene start off slower, like even when she's uh, calling the stranger for help, she keeps looking outside at the garden because that's another thing. She grows all the food that Chloe eats, buys very little groceries, I guess, so she can tamper with it. Probably use pesticides or whatever. But, you know, try to watch for her so she doesn't come in. And then at the pharmacy, try to get information, you know, before she comes in. Those are all still well-paced. But the scene with her, like, crawling across the roof, 
with Pat Healy post van, especially the entire hospital sequence, whether she's in the bed with the nurse, and then when Diane comes to get her, then the whole being wheeled out and she's still completely immobilized. That's all perfectly paced, uh, per perfectly executed uh, suspense uh, sequences. Yeah, there's some convenience for, you know, uh, a running time and some fast pacing for uh, the running time. But at least the suspense scenes were well placed. They let them breathe and play out the way they should have. It was well written. And you did have a very smart, resourceful character. It wasn't just her waiting for the right opportunity to fight back. You know, She had smarts and resources and knew how to figure stuff out. And, you know... Also, you really feel the loss that she had. You feel everything that's been taken from her as she figures all this out. You can see the pain in her face, not just getting her college taken away, but finding out that she had been able to walk her whole life. She did belong to an actual family. So, and a lot of that, most of that is due to the actress, which... The two performances are very well done as well. So yeah, this is definitely one of, one of, if not the most, uh, as far as suspense goes, best and effective movie on Hulu. Overall, I mean, yeah, by default, I'd probably say I like movies like uh, Sensor more, but for like a, a psychological thriller suspense film, this is as good as it gets on Hulu. But yeah, so this is 2020's run. I really enjoyed it. I uh, definitely goes along with other movies I love, like Misery, which is my favorite Stephen King adaptation. Not just film, based on his work, but actual adaptation. Uh, love Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Uh, Munchausen Syndrome by Proxy is a fascinating but very depressing uh a very frustrating uh, disorder to read about. And this may feel like a bit of a Hollywoodized version of Munchausen by Proxy, but I still think it's very well done. Definitely one of the better movies on Hulu. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Run, and uh, thank you for watching. Oh, oh.